Okay, this video is going to review mixtures and physical properties and states of matter. So starting with the review before that, atoms, when they combine together through chemical bonds, um, can form molecules, which is two or more atoms connected together. So hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen um, are molecules. And when you have two or more different atoms connected together, they're also called compounds, like H2O has two different atoms connected together, methane gas. Um, is also a compound. These two molecules here are also molecules. These two compounds are also molecules because any two or more atoms connected together are molecules. But if you have different atoms in the molecule, it's also called a compound. Now, once you go beyond molecules, you get mixtures of molecules. And mixtures are divided into basically um, two types. And that is a mixture versus a pure substance. A pure substance might be, you know, a pure glass of water. Um, oxygen, and that's the only thing. Whereas a mixture where is, is where you have more than one kind of uh, molecule, compound, or element together. And so they're divided into either homogeneous and heter or heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures are where the individual components are, or parts of the mixture you can't um, easily see individually. So like a glass of milk would be a homogeneous mixture because it has all kinds of different molecules inside of it. Um, a can of soda, you know, it's got water, sugar, chemical dye in there. On the other hand, a heterogeneous mixture is one that you can see the individual components. So like a chicken soup. Um, or maybe, you know, a pizza with lots of different toppings. You can see the individual parts. Um, so moving on from that to physical properties. Physical properties are characteristics of a pure substance. Not a mixture now, so pure substance, so like just water um, or just oxygen, but a pure substance that can be observed or measured. And so a bunch of examples, let's go down to here, of physical properties would be, you know, the hardness um, of the substance, the texture, is it soft, smooth, rough, um, does it have a shine, uh, the state of matter, that it's in, which we'll talk about in just a second. Is it a solid, liquid, gas, or a plasma? Um, the ability to dissolve in something else, um, like salt dissolves in water. Uh, its density is a physical property. Um, for example, also water freezing at zero degrees Celsius. A phys Celsius is a physical property of water. Uh, physical properties contrast with chemical properties, which we don't spend too much time with uh, in this class. But chemical properties are, again, characteristics of pure substances, like before, that describe its ability to change into different substances. So there you're talking about chemical reactions. For example, drawn down here, we have, uh, this is sugar, or even the, the paper that, that I'm writing on is, is made out of a form of sugar called cellulose, can combine with oxygen and burn to make carbon dioxide and water. So a chemical property of this paper and sugar is that it can release energy. Um, but again, beyond that, we won't be talking any more about chemical properties in this unit. Uh, so switching to one of the most important uh, and, the, and the thing that we'll be spending a lot of time with that's a physical property is the state of matter something's in. So state of matter is defined as the different forms of matter, um, different forms matter can have or matter can take. And again, a state of matter is a physical property. So an example of water at 75 degrees Fahrenheit is a liquid. Is state of matter is that it's a liquid. At zero degrees and below, water is a solid. That's the state of matter. Um, and matter can change from one state into another by adding or removing energy. That's basically the difference between the different states of matter is how much energy the molecules of that um, substance has. So going through the different states of matter real quickly, um, a solid is defined as it has a fixed volume, a volume that doesn't change, and a shape that doesn't change. If you think of an ice cube, um, you could actually measure length times width times height, um, and its shape doesn't change as long as it doesn't gain any energy and start to melt. So that would be described as a solid. A liquid, on the other hand, has a fixed volume, so you can put it in a graduated cylinder and measure its volume, say 47 mLs of liquid water, but it doesn't have a fixed shape. Its shape kind of takes the shape of the container that it's in. If this water was poured into a little bowl, it would take that shape instead of this shape. So a liquid has a volume that doesn't change. That's what fixed means. 
but its shape can change. And then um, the third state of matter is a gas, so it doesn't have a fixed volume or shape, so it can change its volume or shape. Its, its volume fills the space of the container that it's in, takes the shape of the container. For example, you know, water being boiling off on a stove fills a room. So the volume of the water vapor coming into the room actually is the volume of the room. And the shape depends on what the container is. So those are the three main ones here on Earth, but actually the most common state of matter in the universe because it's what stars is made out of is called plasma. Um, here it's defined as a form of matter where electrons of atoms have enough energy to actually leave an atom. Um, it's, it's also called an ionized gas. So electrons can actually come off the atom that they're normally attached to um, temporarily, permanently. Uh, sometimes when the electrons kind of cool down a little bit, they can reconnect with an atom. And when they do that, they actually produce light. So it says produce light as electrons reattach to an atom. So here we have you know, a simple drawing of a nucleus, an atom, a couple of orbitals here. The electron, it leaves at this point when the electron's gone. I guess this would be part of a plasma. The electron usually will cool back down and reattach to an atom. And when it does that, it actually releases light. Um, so light produced by the sun, light produced by light bulbs is actually from um, a, a, a momentary movement of electrons creating this state of uh, matter called a plasma. Examples of, of plasma in our world would be lightning um, and fluorescent lights. Um, but the major source of plasma in the universe and the major state of matter in the universe is, is in stars. Um, that's the plasma inside of stars because they have so much heat and energy. Um, there aren't even molecules in stars, and the nuclei often have their electrons ripped off of them. Um, so where you are is, or where is a sample of matter is on this kind of line of states of matter it really depends on how much energy it has. If it has more energy, it's going to be moving you know, from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas or even lots of energy can move to a plasma. If things starts cooling down, you can get it. Uh, the plasma has the electrons jump back down, a gas will cool down to a liquid, and a liquid with less energy can cool down to a solid. So these are the changes known as the state of, state of matter, um, which is a physical property of matter. And that's it.